Look at that beautiful full motion video. Hey guys, it's Bando, and welcome to this new Let's Play that I'm doing. We're playing uh, Strife, particularly the Veteran Edition, uh, released by Night Dive earlier, no, it was way late last year. And this is probably one of the greatest games you may never have heard of to come out in like the, the mid 90s. Uh, originally by Rogue Entertainment, it's a first person stealth RPG hybrid game. And this came way before, like, stuff like Deus Ex and System Shock 2, System Shock 1 was a thing, but anyway, uh, so we'll start the game. Here's the thing. Now, we got a bit of backstory when we wait on the title screen, so I'll let that just kind of slide in when, man, look at that, look at that rogue. The comet struck our planet without warning. We lost our paradise in a single violent stroke. The impact released a virus which swept through the land and killed millions. They turned out to be the lucky ones. For those that did not die became mutations of humanity. Some became fanatics who heard the voice of a malignant god in their heads and called themselves the Order. 1886. And those of us who were deaf to this voice suffer horribly and are forced to serve these ruthless psychotics who wield weapons more powerful than anything we can muster. They destroy our women and children. Destroy. So that we must hide them underground and live like animals in constant fear for our lives. But there are whispers of discontent. If we organize, can we defeat our masters? Weapons are being stolen. Soldiers are being trained. A movement is born. Born of lifelong strife. Strife. <laughs> so anyway, so, uh, here's a bit of a story, kind of, type it out game. Or story thing, I don't know. I'm gonna read this in the kind of, in not the cloud voice. Totally not. You are a wandering mercenary led to the small town of Tarnail by rumors of conflict between the Order, a well-equipped religious monarchy, and the Front, the ragtag resistance movement. While searching for the Front, you decided to take a brief rest somewhere that you thought was safe. The Order's acolytes have been rounding up all suspicious characters in the area. Yes, you happen to be one of them. What they didn't expect, though, is the knife you keep concealed for situations just like this one. Alright. So anyway, I guess with that, we'll start the game. Now, there's five difficulty levels. This game, by the way, is on the Doom engine, so... A lot of things are like Doom, particularly how the Bloodbath... Nope. How the Bloodbath difficulty is basically Elite, but everything respawns. In ridiculous amounts. But I'm gonna be awesome, and we're gonna play on Elite. There's also a demo, which we'll get to after we beat the main game. But for now, we'll just do this. There we go. So anyway, so we start off and you may be going like, whoa, snap, what's going on? And first thing we want to do is punch the heck out of this guy without taking too many hits. Because I don't really know, like, what dictates it. Sometimes these guys will shoot you. I conveniently did not get shot at all. Uh, I'll also pick up some ammo and stuff. See, this guy is a bit of a jerk. He'll shoot us. There we go. But well, that's alright. Just take out a few guys. And it's kind of annoying at the beginning because that happens, but for the most part it's alright. In a small world, word travels fast. I hear you just removed some obstacles from your path. Nice work. Did, did you just hear that you just in some around the corner? Projects? I guess. Good. Some uh, friends of mine need someone silenced. Belden is being held by the Order in their sanctuary. There's a rarely used entrance by a small pier off the river which is unguarded. Get in, shut him up, and bring his ring back to me as proof. I'll guarantee 50 gold, and if you return without setting off every alarm in town, there's the chance to earn much, much more. And here's a little helper that should give you an edge. Good. Remember, his silence is golden. Man, that would make a great video title. So anyway, so we got this crossbow. Now, Strife is an interesting game because it came out in 1996, and that's uh, the same year that Quake came out. But, uh, yeah, you can clearly tell it's a Doom game because of this map. But, uh, it's also got a little equipment screen, and you can see that there's a bunch of weapons and stuff. There's also stats, which we'll get to a bit later. 
Uh, but you can walk around, you can talk to people. Release me. Leave an old man alone. You could probably tell that people with pictures in the background are much more important than people who don't have pictures in their backgrounds, such as this guy right here. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, uh, this game is... It's still a linear game. It's not open world. Despite the fact that there's all these places around here, you can barely do anything. So I'm going to be cutting right to the chase and going in here. Uh, mainly because... Hello. Okay. You can also talk to these guys. <laughs> and they seem they seem kind of a bit weird. There's no concealing weapons. It's just as long as you don't shoot anyone, no one attacks you. Um, so yeah. <laughs> a lot to take in at first. If we go in here, we'll find this guy right here. And he has some stuff to say. I'm kind of a talent broker for the rebels. A guy who is as good as you can make a lot of gold. If you're hooked up with the right people. Good choice. The Order's sanctuary by the river is their unofficial torture chamber. Hidden inside, there's a golden chalice. You swipe it and reap your reward. Here's a crossbow. Just aim straight and splat. Remember, grab the fancy cup and get to the tavern. Alright. So anyway, so... Uh, there's side things as well. There's kind of smallish side, like, I don't want to say quests, because it's not like quests in the traditional sense in this game. Um, but definitely, like, there's a few side things to do. The, the world is kind of openish. You can go to a lot of places, uh, but generally you go from level to level in a linear fashion. Of course, one cool thing about this game is that you can tackle objectives in kind of any direction you want, but I think to best demonstrate it, let's go into the first level. So. We can go around all this place, we can go to the store, buy some things with the lack of money we have, which is great. And you may be wondering, where do you get money? And for the most part, you just kind of go over here. So here's the sanctuary, we had to go in here. Hello! Nobody's allowed in here? What do you mean? Okay. You seem to have left this door open though. So yeah. Now you're allowed to use your knife thing to stab kind of freely. And as long as you're not attacking like people, no one minds. Of course, firing any other weapon, they get a bit angry. It's also a bit weird because you can open this door and he doesn't seem to mind at all. So anyway, but in we go to the sanctuary and I'm just gonna overwrite the, the poopy doopy save. So anyway, so this is the first level. Now, this green thing triggers alarms. Unfortunately, <laughs> great way to show the stealth by having a, the first level where you can't. So anyway, so we're just gonna like waltz right in and we're just gonna handle things go pshoo, 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 pshoo. You may notice the crossbow is not as effective as you want it to be. Also, I've got it so uh, in, the, in the veteran edition of this game, which you can buy on Steam, uh, there's, a, there's a feature automatically enabled where it uses health kits for you. And I recommend playing with that because like, it's a little bit annoying having to like inventory manage like a lot of the game. Like just dealing with health kits all the time, especially because it's just like, if you got the health kit, it's just heal like that. So anyway, so we'll go around the place, and uh, you may notice a couple of things, such as, here's the fancy chalice. So we're like, okay, how do we get open that? Well, let's go through the level a little bit, and we'll find out. Uh, the game is your standard kind of run and gun kind of thing, like your Doom, basically. You know, just run, point, uh, things vertically aim for you. The Veterans Edition of this game just lets you uh, look up and down, which is nice. I think you can in the original, but it doesn't really like serve much purpose. And it's in the strange Doom style, where it kind of pans the screen. Now, we can activate this staircase, which will lead us outside the level. But for now, let's go in here and... Oh, a guy in red. You can tell he's stronger than the others. They seem to... I was about to say, they seem to not be shooting me as often, but uh, for the most part. Uh, we can pick up some ammo. We can pick up some armor, which is nice. A lot of good stuff. Now, if you flick this switch... We can go all the way around, we'll go in that door just before we exit. Uh, not this. Uh, you may also be wondering, this lever lowers this bridge, which lets you exit via the river, but it's not the ideal exit. Now, flicking that switch back in that room, like way back there, opens the chalice room. Now, I'm not going to pick this up, because if you pick this up, in the original version of the game, you get screwed out of progressing because you, you'll talk to this one guy a little bit later and he tells you off for picking up the cup 
and he won't proceed the story. In the Veterans Edition, he'll tell you off once, and then he'll completely forget it for some reason. But, honestly, it's better if you don't pick it up. And the main reason is, because as soon as you try to return the cup to the guy, he immediately turns on you and starts attacking you. As well as the fact that he gets called out later. So this is Belden, he's like, I don't want any trouble, stay away from me. I've had enough trouble with what that bastard Harris did to me, he promised me money, instead I get to look forward to being questioned by the programmer. Dude, he had like $10 right here. Look at that $10, oh crap, don't chuck my $10. Now, you gotta kill this guy. Was he bleeding that ring? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, so anyway, we'll just kind of grab his ring and make a bike Michael Bolton so anyway so we can go back out here and we're back in the town which is kind of neat so now uh, let's go back to uh, this guy the ring of the traitor yeah where's my money here you earned it the traitor you killed was about to reveal the location of the front you saved lives how would you like to earn more gold and a future free from tyranny yeah tell me have a business relationship with the front's leader Maisel. I know he needs an incisive fellow like yourself, and he pays well. Take this recovered comm unit, and you'll be led to, shall we say, opportunities. Okay. Get going. If you hang around here, we're both dead. Okay. So anyway, so... If this comm unit is working, that means you're still 100% human. I've been ordered to bring you in. We're talking trust here. Betray me and pay. Oh, and by the way, you can call me Blackbird. So anyway, so we can go back to... This guy right up here, and he'll just be like, what are you waiting for? "Bring me that chalice." And you'll be like, "Oh, okay, sure." Now, here's something kind of neat: is that if you do kill him, quick load. If you kill him silently, don't use your guns. Just kill him silently. If you do kill him silently, you'll notice the switch comes up, and you'll press it, and then you can go down these stairs, and bam! Some beautiful stuff. A lot of money, uh, a targeting receptor, which I just wasted. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> surprisingly the crossbow is not silent, like, <laughs> I know, right? Anyway, they never suspect a thing. Now you can kill them to get that stuff. If you were to return the chalice, the alarms would be off, like, before you even entered the tavern. That's why it's kind of annoying. Um, so yeah. So now we'll just... Old town hall. After the order bombed it, Maisel had a tunnel built that lets us get in and out without the Acolyte's knowledge. That's a pretty cool sky, you know, for 1996. Also, fancy bloom effects and motion blur. Woo! <laughs> anyway. Go through the door on your left, and then the one on the right. The guard's name is Jeff. Tell him you need gold. Hello. What are you doing here? So, for some odd reason, this audio sounds so much better. And then Blackbird told you the code, huh? <laughs> well, let me shut off the alarm. Maisel is one flight down. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so we get to proceed on, I guess. Ooh, staircase. And here we are into the front base. Uh, where we ba basically get a bit of exposition. These guys are just like, ah. Eh. I'm the new recruit. Don't don't get close to big robots. Got it. Here's a guy. He's got a different sprite, so you can tell he's important. Welcome to the last flicker of hope. Only we have the free will to oppose the order. We have the sharpest scientific minds and many able bodies, but we lack that one real uh, problem solver who will give us the edge we need. Help us. Okay. Good. Blackbird will continue to be your guide. She's taken quite a shine to you. Together you've got to unlock the secrets of the Order and their inhuman servants. Get inside and take them down. Sounds like a dream job, doesn't it? Frankly, the situation is a mess. You must accomplish several missions to prepare the way for more attacks on the Order. Our last raid was a disaster and most of our troops were captured. I need you to free these prisoners. Okay. Take this money and visit Irali, who supplies our weapons. Then this key will get you in to see the governor. He's a corrupt puppet of the order, but he loves to make deals. Do whatever you need to free our brothers in arms. 
and I'll be right there with you. Okay. Fight for the front and freedom. Move out. Okay. So anyway, so uh, with that, I'm gonna say that's the end of this first part. I uh, <laughs> a bit short of breath, especially because all the dialogue and stuff and a bit of explaining. Um, so yeah, so thank you guys for watching, and if you did watch the old version of this, I think I think you, you'll you, you'll see. We'll we'll see stuff. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you kids next time. Bye bye.